Hi, welcome back to Teleradio Tutoring. I am Sangeeta Sharma. We will be continuing with the topic that we started last class on economics. Chapter number 16, the topic is economics. Last class we did on economics. I explained to you about what is economics. Economics is the sum total of all the economic activities in a country. We also did about the basic functions of economy, production, consumption and investment. Then we did the two main uh, functions of economy that is to provide goods and services to satisfy human wants and also to provide employment generating opportunities or earning opportunities to the people. Then we came on the different types of economy on three bases that is on the basis of nature we did the different categories, simple and complex economy, closed and open economy, planned and unplanned economy, and also we did the agricultural and industrial economy. Then on the second one, on the basis of ownership of the means of production, there are three types of economy, capitalist economy, socialist economy, and also mixed economy. We did with capitalist economy. And I was telling you that capitalist economy is one which refers to an economy where the means of production that is land and capital are owned by private individuals and here the it follows lazy fear doctrine or lazy fear it is also called capitalist economy is also called lazy fear economy here the government cannot interfere in the business activities of the country and we also uh, discussed about the features of a capitalist economy I will just do a recap. Private property and inheritance is allowed in a capitalist economy. There is freedom of enterprise, business, and contract. Contract means written agreement. People have freedom or capitalists have freedom to set up their own business. There is a freedom of consumption. Capitalist economy allows its consumers to choose what kind of goods they want, which goods they want to use and in what quantity. There is competition in the market, okay? The best one sells, so there is competition among the sellers. There is free and perfect competition. That is lazy, there is lazy fear. The government of the country does not interfere in the business activity of the country. There is profit motive. The main aim of the capitalist economy, you have to remember this, the main aim of the capitalist economy is self-interest and profit motive. And also, there, the society is divided into haves and have-nots. There is a class difference, a wide gap between the rich and the poor, and also there is market is run by price mechanism. Okay, so these were the features that we did about capitalist economy. Today we will come to the next one on the basis of uh, on the basis of ownership of the means of production. We did capitalist economy. Now we will start with socialist economy. Here we did capitalist. socialist. Now, in the capitalist economy, one drawback or one demerit was that there was a wide economic gap between the rich and the poor, the haves and the have-nots, okay? And so countries in the world, they felt that this economic system was not a perfect economic system. So our country would like to have a different economic system, not a capitalist economy, because capitalist economy, there was wide gap between the rich and the poor, or the haves and the have-nots, we call it. So, uh, to remove and there was exploitation of the in capitalist economy, the working class was exploited. Exploited means unfairly treated, okay, or victimized. Okay, the poor, the worker, working class suffered in the capitalist economy because the capitalists or those businessmen who owned money and who ra ran the country or the economy, they did not treat the working class. So the working class properly, so the working class suffered and there was wide gap. And as a result, countries of the world started thinking that this is not the type of economy that we would like to adopt. We would like to adopt a different kind of an economy and so came up with the idea of a socialist economy. Now in a socialist economy, okay, uh, this economy 
is a type of economy where the means of production, that is land and capital, okay, are owned and managed by the government. So the government decided, okay, we will not, in the capitalist economy, government does not have any say. Everything is in the hands of the businessmen. So they found that this economy was not perfect. People, working class was suffering. Exploitation was there of the poor and the marginalized class, the weaker section of the people. So countries of the world, they started thinking that we should devise a different way whereby exploitation of the people will not be there. All the power will not be wasted in the hands of the private individuals or money holders, or you can say capitalists. So in a socialist system, they devised a socialist system of economy where okay, the means of production, that is capital and lands are in the hands of the fully controlled by the government. They did not give in socialist economy is one where the means of production are owned and managed by the government. So since everything, so everything is in the hands of the government, wealth and capital is in the hands of the government. The government controls okay, and manages the entire production process. The government controls the entire production process. Now we can also say that government, we are the government, people form the government. So people form the government. So we can also say that in a socialist economy, the means of production are owned by the community. We sometimes say it is owned, the means of production in a socialist economy is owned by the government. Now government are formed by the people from the community only. We choose our representatives and they form the government. So it is also said that the means of production in a socialist economy is under the control of the community. According to H.D. Dickinson, okay, socialism is an economic organization in which the material means of production are owned by the whole community and operated by representatives of people who are responsible to the community. So he defines uh, socialism as an economic organization Okay, in which the whole community okay, owns the material means of production and the representatives that are chosen from among the people, they are responsible to run the government. That is how he described, H.D. Uh, Dickinson describes the socialist economy or socialism. Now the features of uh, socialism or socialist economy are in a socialist economy, okay, we find that private property is totally abolished. No one is allowed to have private property, okay. Everything belongs to the state, everything belongs to the government. Private individuals cannot have their own personal property. So private property is totally abolished as just the opposite of capitalism. In capitalism, there is private property and inheritance. People have a right to. Here in socialism, Private property is totally abolished. People cannot have private property. Government is the only producer. Only government produces, okay? And various types of commodities are produced only by the government and no one else. And so the factors of production, that is land capital, is under the control of the government. And since in a socialist economy, private ownership of property is not allowed. Everything is in the hands of the government. The government manages everything. What happens is there, the main aim, they try to bring about economic equality. Okay, somehow economic equality, main aim is to bring about maximum social benefit and also economic equality and equal distribution of wealth among the countries or among the people in the country. So that is a socialist economy. Now we come to the third one, mixed economy. Now, countries of the world accepted capitalism. Capitalism, the owners of capitals were fully in control. Some countries did not like, they wanted a middle path, so they went for socialist economy. Socialism, again, just the opposite. In capitalism, the capitalist or the owners of wealth and money, they controlled the economy. And so there was exploitation of the working class. This was not like, so some countries, they chose a different one. They chose socialism. Everything they placed in the hands of the government, the government managed the means of production. The government controlled everything. Private property was not allowed and government tried to see that there was equal distribution of wealth. But still then countries of the world felt that this is also not the type of economy that we would want. Not capitalism, not socialism. Okay, because socialism does not allow private property. 
So that is, has become too extreme. Some countries of the world, they felt that this is also too extreme. We don't want this kind of economy also. So they decided and they went for the third type of economy that is mixed economy. In India, we have mixed economy. So mixed in mixed economy, we will find the good features of both capitalism and socialism are there and the bad features of capitalism and socialism are removed and those good things are added in the mixed economy. So countries of the world, some countries of the world, we have mixed economy. India is an example of mixed economy. So we come to mixed economy. So we see that mixed economy is a combination of capitalist and or capitalism and socialism. We say that it is a combined form or uh, it is a mixed form of capitalism and socialism. That's why the name mixed economy. And according to Anayatol Murad, he says that mixed economy is that economy in which both the government and private individuals exercise control, okay, economic control. So, uh, and yeah, I told Murad, he says that mixed economy is an economy where uh, both the government also has control as well as the private individuals also exercises control, unlike the capitalist economy where only the private individuals and socialist economy where only government control. Here, mix. Okay, there are certain areas where the government controls, there are certain areas where private individual controls. So in a mixed economy, in this type of economy, the best element, the best features of both capitalism and socialism are included, okay? It appreciates, mixed economy appreciates the advantage of private enterprise or private business, enterprise means business or company and private property also, okay? It accepts that feature of capitalism that is having private company, private individuals are allowed to have their own companies, okay, private companies and also private property is allowed. But, and they are allowed, they, they are based on, we find this feature in the mixed economy that private individuals are allowed to have private enterprise and private property and their motive is like the capitalist, like self-interest and profit motive, that is allowed. Now, Government itself here in the mixed economy, here government is the sole proprietor, here government cannot interfere, but here even government has some industries, government also runs some industries and government has full control over those industries. So government itself runs some industries, therefore economy is divided into two parts. Some are run by private, some are run by government, so economy is divided into two parts. Public and private, we call it. Don't confuse students, don't confuse the term public because when we say public, in general, when we use the word public, we mean people. But here, when we are talking about mixed economy and we are dividing public and private, we mean public means government. Okay, so this we public and this is private. So when we are talking of mixed economy, mixed economy has the best feature of capitalism as well as socialism. So like the capitalism in mixed economy, private ownership of property and private enterprise is allowed. But unlike the capitalism and like the socialism, government also owns some industries and factories. And because of that, it is divided into public and private. Some companies are owned or some production units are owned by private individuals and some by government. So government is called public and private. So therefore economy in a mixed economy like India, the economy is divided into public sector and private sector. When we say public sector, it's the government sector. The government is the uh, producer. And when we say private sector, it is managed by private individuals. Now, basic and key industry are controlled by the government. In a mixed economy, the basic and the key industry, major industries are controlled by the government. And the development of the rest Major ones like railways, defense productions, transport, communication, these are under the control of the government and the rest are left to the private individuals. 
But even though it is left under the private individuals, the private pro uh, entrepreneurs are under the control or regulation of the government. So mixed economy is an economy where both free market mechanism as well as economic planning exist. Okay, free market that is the characteristics of a capitalist economy as well economic planning that is of the socialist economy both comes together coexist and government controls private production through how does the government control private individuals are given right to run um, certain key industries certain industries but how does the government control in a mixed economy though private individuals are allowed to do business how does the government control them the government controls them by issuing license and permits okay through licensing and permit the government controls the private sector sometimes government itself enters into production also the government starts producing also so there is coexistence of the public and the private sector so the coexistence of this public and private enterprise is a major characteristic of mixed economy. But if the price of a commodity, sometimes in a mixed economy, it happens that the prices of certain goods go up. When this happens, the government jumps or the government comes, okay? And in the market, the government itself starts producing those commodities and brings it into the market to regulate the price. So in this way, in a mixed economy, there is the coexistence of public and private enterprise. But if the price of a certain commodity in the open market is too high, then government supplies the commodity in limited quantity at a reasonable price to the consumers. And in this way, tries to help the consumer so that the consumer in a mixed economy are not exploited by the private uh, businesses. And this is called rationing, okay? Ration cards or rationing. So when prices of things goes up, the government gives subsidies or the government brings about rationing and tries to give fixed amount of good at controlled prices to the consumer. Thus, thus, government imposes control. So we can say that the government imposes control on the private uh, business houses or government imposes control on both the demand and supply of the market. Now, India is a good example of mixed economy. We have a mixed economy. There are certain key and major industries which are run by the government itself, but there are also big business houses which are run by private individuals, but under the control of the government. The government finds a way through licensing or through permit to bring these companies or business houses, private business houses under the control of the government. So that is a mixed economy. So we have seen on the basis of ownership of the means of production, we have three types of economy that is capitalist economy, where owners of capitalist uh, capitals or capitalists are the owners of capital or money. Capital means money. So they control the economy, all the business decisions, production, distribution price, they decided. But in a socialist economy, just the opposite, the government controls and manages everything. But in a mixed economy, some areas are controlled and managed by the government, but some are controlled by private individuals. So these are the three types of economy on the basis of ownership of the means of production. Now, some features of mixed economy I will read out. Mixed economy has certain features. What features? There is coexistence of private and uh, public sector. There is both private sector and then public sector, government owned sector and the private owned sector. Then there is economic planning. The government, since certain key and major industries are under the control of the government, the government manages it, okay, there is economic planning, like the central planning authority is there, like in India, the Niti Aayog is there at present, the Niti Aayog decides what developmental plans are to be taken, so economic planning is there, then it is beneficial for the masses because uh, for the masses, 
In a mixed economy, prices are controlled by the government or regulated by the government. The government does not allow the prices to go up. When the prices of certain commodities at certain time goes up, the government itself starts producing and brings those commodities in the markets and starts issuing or rationing it at uh, fixed prices, at lower prices so that consumers will not suffer. So in this way, the government also con uh, protects the consumers. The interest of the workers are always kept in mind in a, a mixed economy and also it tries to reduce the inequalities of income among the people that is the feature of a mixed economy so we can say that a mixed economy is a midway we say it's a middle path that is chosen middle path not capitalism not socialism but a middle path lying between socialism and capitalism and harnessing or trying to bring out the best of both uh, the best features of both this system together and at the same time trying to affect the defects or the demerits of both. So distinction we have seen between uh, the three on the basis of ownership of the means of production, we can classify economies as capitalist economy, socialist economy and mixed economy. Now here I would like uh, all of you to uh, see a chart that I have prepared. This is a distinction You can see this on page number 222, children, it's there in uh, page 222. The reason that I have copied it here is to make you understand how important it is, this one page, okay? And I will uh, suggest that you make in a, a size 4 paper or in a, any full scale paper, you can make a chart like this. You can copy down from page number 222, this one, and you can paste it on the wall, okay? Where your eyes often goes and then uh, so th and then read what is written there and this will make it very clear and uh, because so I will I have explained all capitalist economy socialist economy and mixed economy but when you try to remember everything all the features it becomes difficult but when you have a chart like this pasted near you and every time uh, your eyes goes there and you read it becomes easy and it makes you remember things easily and during exam time this will really help you. So and it is very simple also this way to learn also see basis. I just discussed on basis ownership who owns it. Yes, the means of production ownership capitalist economy means of production are owned by private individual land and capital is owned by private individual in a socialist economy. It is owned and managed by the government. Very simple here private individual here socialist means it is owned and managed by the government here by state as well as private individuals. So combination of both is here. Here motive. What is the motive of a capitalist economy? The motive of a capitalist economy is economic activities are guided by self-interest and profit motive. Motive in a capitalist economy, motive is self-interest, your own interest and profit motive, profit. But in a socialist economy, the government is the controller. Government produces everything. Government thinks about social welfare. How to benefit the people, maximum pe number of people in the society. So motive is social welfare. Okay, government always thinks about, government does not think about profit. It thinks about social welfare. So about here, mixed economy, we have a combination of both. So both social motive as well as social welfare and profit motive. This should be social welfare and profit motive, both feature you can see. Profit motive comes from here and social welfare comes from a combination of both. That's why we say mixed economy is a middle path that takes the good feature of both and avoids the bad ones. Now instrument, okay? All economic problems, okay, how? Instruments means how are problems solved? In a capitalist economy, all economic problems are solved with the help of price mechanism. Price mechanism means prices of goods. It is based on demand and supply in the market. Now here in the socialist economy, government does the central planning authority plans the economy. So economic planning is there. Here both, 
price mechanism as well as economic planning both. Nature of occupation, here you will see complete economic freedom. In a capitalist economy, you can see that nature of occupation, capitalists have complete freedom. Here, people, individual freedom of enterprise, here you can see complete economic freedom. People have freedom, free to start any type of business of their choice in a capitalist economy. People have or individuals have freedom to start their own business and enterprises. They are free to enter business as they like. If they don't want to, they can withdraw back anytime. So that is the nature of occupation. Then in a socialist economy, people are not allowed, okay? In a socialist economy, strictly only the government manages and controls, so people are not allowed to own their own business, okay? No one can open a business. There is no private enterprise or there is no private businesses. Government is the only producer. Now here, limited sovereignty. Limited sovereignty means private individuals are also there in this, government also produces, but private uh, individuals are also allowed to run business, but limited sovereignty means limited freedom means they still come under the control of the government. Okay, in India, you will see Tata's, Birla's, Ambani's, you will see all those, okay, they are private companies, but they are still under the control of the government, limited, okay. It's, so we see competition, what kind of competition? In a capitalist economy, there is free competition among buyers and sellers. Buyers and sellers, they will be tough competition and who wins the competition has a monopoly or control over the market. But in a socialist economy, since government only produces, no one is allowed to produce, there is no rivalry and also competition, there is no competition. Okay, and even the government production unit, they do not enter into rivalry or conflict with one another, so there is no rivalry or competition. But here, there is low degree of competition. But in a capitalist economy, you will see that competition is high. Now, distribution of income. You'll find that in capitalist economy, large inequalities of income. Income. Rich are very rich, the capitalists the, and the working class are poor. So there is large inequalities of income. In a socialist economy, inequalities of income is very small because the government produces, the government tries. Its main aim is uh, to reduce inequalities among the people. And so inequalities of income is very small in a socialist economy. And in a mixed economy, you can see that there are Okay, income inequalities are there, but when you see the national income, what is national income? National income is the final value of all the goods and services produced in the country plus income coming from abroad. We have done in the previous uh, class in class 7 eight. So national income, when we say national income of India, we mean the final value, money value of all the goods and services produced in a country in one year plus the income coming from abroad. Also, we call it as national income. So in a mixed economy, since India is a mixed economy, income inequalities are there, but national income is not highly unequal, okay? The national income tries to balance. Now, economic fluctuation. Fluctuation means can change, unsteady. It goes up, fluctuates, it's very unsteady, okay, so it can change. So in a capitalist economy, economic fluctuation widely seen, okay, because competition is there, it's widely seen. Prices may go up, again, it may come down, fluctuation. No place here, there is no fluctuation, it's very steady, it's found here. Here also some level of fluctuation is found. Then society. How are the condition of the people in society? In a capitalist economy, you can see divided into uh, groups, I've written in short, haves and have not. The society is divided into the rich and the poor, haves and have nots. And in a socialist economy, no class distinction. Everyone uh, is the same, okay? Because the government is the sole manager, is the sole producer, so there is no class distinction in a socialist economy. Everyone is equal, everyone, if is willing to work, okay? will get work and has to work. And in a mixed economy, low degree of class conflict is found. Okay, rich and poor. So if you can make this from page 222 and paste it, this will make the understanding of this uh, 
economies, capitalist, socialist, and mixed economy clearer for you. That is the reason that I made this, copied this into a chart and uh, wanted to show you. Okay, now we come to the next topic. That is on the basis of level of development. We have done on the basis of ownership of means of uh, production. Now the third one. On the basis of level of development. So we are doing the second classification. Now we are on the third one, on the basis of level of development, the third one we have just done on the basis of nature, we have done on the basis of ownership of means of production, capitalist, socialist, and mixed economy. Now we will see on the basis of level of development. On the basis of level of development, we can classify economy as developed and underdeveloped, two type. Developed and underdeveloped. Developed economy is also some, developed economy are those economies which are highly advanced and developed and underdeveloped economies are those economies which are underdeveloped. Developing economies are also sometimes called uh, underdeveloped economy. For example, India is not an underdeveloped economy. We can say India is a developing economy, but there is two categories only under this. And so developing economies also sometimes comes under the uh, underdeveloped economy. So quickly, let me explain uh, developed and underdeveloped economy. Economies or countries which uh, enjoy a high level of per capita income and also a high standard of living are called uh, developed economies. And developed economies have uh, industrialization, they have exploited their natural, physical, as well as human resources fully, and uh, they have full employment or gainful employment, they have been able to give full or complete um, uh, gainful or large um, uh, employment to the people. Economies of America, Canada, England, Japan, Russia are examples of developed economy. And some of the features of developed economies are they have a high per capita income, high level of national income, full exploitation of resources, all those who are able and willing are provided employment in the country and there is technological investment and also high standard of living. Underdeveloped economies on the other hand are those economies where the level of per capita income is low and the standard of living of the people is also low. So students, today we have seen the uh, classification of the three types of economy on the basis of nature, on the basis of ownership of the means of production, and also on the basis of level of development. We, I have just started with on the basis of level of development. We have still more to go. We will be uh, studying or I will be explaining to you the developed economy, why India is called a developing economy, why India is called a mixed economy, what are the features uh, or of uh, public sector, private sectors, those are the things that we will be discussing. Uh, for today, we will close here. In the next class, I will be taking up the same chapters and we will try to cover those portions that are still left. Till then, Take care, stay safe, and of course, stay in touch with your books.